Well, I've been sitting on it long enough. It's time. Time to show the goods. It's time to talk about my webcomic. Everyone, say hello to Nadia. Hello. How are you? For those of you who are new here, hi. I'm Christine. I like spaghetti. I'm an art school grad with a degree in cartooning, aka making comics. For two and a half years, I've been working on a webcomic. It's only just coming out of that weird gray area in the middle stages of development, but I do know how the story begins as well as how it ends, and I more or less have the first season down in its entirety. At least, all the major plot points and whatnot. Anyway, before I get sidetracked, this is the same webcomic that I've been teasing with my character reference sheets that I've been uploading over the last year. So if you've been around since October of last year when I released the first of those videos, or you're just tuning in now, settle in and I'll finally formally introduce you to the project that has consumed all of my creative brain cells. Yeah. In the early months of 2021, I was at a very interesting point in my life. Make a very long story short, I found myself in a researching deep dive. This was also a few months after I started to get into paranormal stuff, but that's besides the point. Now, every author has to do their research, otherwise you're gonna sound like a nutball talking out of their butt, and it's gonna show in your writing. Some people might research different time periods, the fashions of those times, how different machines work. In my case, I did a months-long research binge... on cults. You're probably wondering, Christine, you could have researched a million other things. Why cults? Why are you doing this to yourself? And the short answer to that is... I have no clue. Just stay with me for this one. I spent several months in the research trenches looking up theories of operating, hierarchical structures, everything the major cults have in common, etc, etc. Along the way, I threw in some steampunkish late 19th century vibes and existential ruminations and influence from some of my favorite things. And thus, The Reverent Silence was born. Being about two and a half years old, The Reverent Silence is one of my newer story concepts, but I'm very happy with the progress being made and I want to have it up for the world to see soon. I have a tentative release date, but I'll drop that when I feel like I'm ready to do so. Even though I want to release it soon, I also want to make sure it's presentable. The art of comics is an elaborate one, and you have to know what you're doing. And I'm saying this as a technically professional cartoonist. Well, okay, I have a degree, so does this make me a pro? Anyway, you're probably wondering what the story is about, so I'm just gonna stop with all the extra details and get to the meat of this introduction video. In the city of Blackfeld, gifted individuals known as Reverence serve to protect civilians from dangerous forces, from rogue criminals to the many shades that haunt the city at night. Nadia Yefremovna, a member of the Blackfeld Investigation Bureau and a very rare Reverend automaton, spends her days juggling her duties with trying to uncover the odd truth of her existence. When a magic counseling group sets up shop in the City of Wisdom, Nadia becomes desperate for answers. However, not long after, strange occurrences begin to happen in Blackfeld, and it's not just Nadia's past that comes knocking, but the lives and secrets of everyone she knows. Also, kinda spoilers, that magic counseling group isn't actually a magic counseling group. The truth of what they are is a bit of a surprise. Though it will be pretty clear from the get-go that the folks at Dawnrise Counseling Associates don't really have the best intentions. The Reverent Silence has gone through several name changes, including Verse of Silence and The Song of Silence, which was also originally the name of one of my story ideas that ultimately got an overhaul and a name change of its own. There's actually two reasons why I ultimately went with The Reverent Silence as the title. One, because the title is a reference to the magic system in the story, which is known as Reverence, and also because Nadia is a Reverend. The Silence bit is because... uh... Actually, that's a major spoiler, so I'm not going to talk about it. Sorry. When this story was in the very early development phase, the focus was exclusive to Blackfeld, and I knew I wanted to incorporate some sort of light versus darkness theme. But as the story and the lore came together, the scope of the Reverent Silence expanded far beyond the boundaries of Blackfeld, and it just became a sweeping tale of an automaton trying to understand her place in the world and how she got to where she is when the story begins. If anything, I'd say it's really a story about destiny, the physical and mental consequences of harboring guilt, persevering in the face of danger, and finding a way out of the darkness of the past. 
Without giving away too much, making the reverent silence has been very cathartic for me and has gotten me through the days where my mental health and mood just aren't all there. So this story is very special to me. Funny enough, and as I'm sure most people do, or it might just be me, who knows. Before the researching deep dive happened, some parts of the foundation for the reverent silence came to me in a dream, including the inspiration for Nadia's design. The idea for the 19th century Victorian steampunk vibes came a little later on. From there, it just grew and grew, and I've taken some personal experiences and old characters of mine and put them in the story with a dash of my knowledge of the paranormal. As for inspiration from other media that I've enjoyed, uh, again, stay with me for this one. This is a bit of a doozy. You're probably going to think, where does this woman find so many obscure titles? It's fine. It's fine. So, the dream that spurned the reverent silence into creation. Would you believe me if I told you that it was a dream where one of my favorite shows got a second season? The show in question being Sirius the Jaeger. Please watch it. It's only 12 episodes. It's on Netflix if you're in the US. Uh, I don't know about other countries. It's also the show that got me into vampires. Anyway, you can probably imagine my disappointment when I woke up and realized it was all a dream. I'm not gonna get into the details, but if anyone watching has seen that show, then you can probably guess who partially inspired Nadia's design. Shameless, I know. There are a few other influences from that show that went into the backbone of the reverent silence, like the decision to give the story a vintage historical type setting, but that's about as far as it goes. There are no vampires here. Again, sorry. In my character sheet videos for The Reverent Silence, you've probably also noticed that a good portion of the cast has animal-like characteristics, from cat ears to antlers to snake tails, and there's an elf too. I won't lie, I kinda blame Arknights for this, even though it's by no means the first creative property to include characters with animal traits. I mean, just Google search cat girls or something and you'll see what I mean. They've been around for a long time and I am by no means attempting to take credit for inventing the proverbial wheel here, because I'm not. But my point is, I also have to give thanks to this wonderful little tower defense game for filling that weird world building hole that was there in the first few months of the development stages. I did consider having an entirely human cast, but something about that was incredibly lacking. So I switched things up. For a good while, it was just Nadia and Safia in the cast, while the rest of the main group remained uncertain. In the meantime, I spent some time developing the main characters I did have, and in February of 2021, I made my very first drawing of Nadia. Look at her! About two months later, I found the other two members of the main protagonist group, Peter and Lark, both of whom have been featured on my channel before, and they were both old characters of mine that until that point had been sidelined. Despite this, the reverent silence actually spent a couple of months in what I'm going to call the pit of developmental uncertainty, because for the first few months I wasn't sure who the villains would be. I knew there would be an investigative element to the story, but who the main characters were going to investigate remained a mystery. Until my researching deep dive began. A couple of weeks in, I finally had the epiphany and everything fell into place. I began brainstorming what Marielle's little <coughs> counseling group would be like, and how they would function. The foundation has stayed the same, but there have been little things added in over the course of the last two years. And there have also been little things added to the entire story in general. While the scope of the story was still limited to Blackfeld, the story was just going to be a group that specializes in magic-based investigations, keeping an eye on Dawnrise, while the truth of their nature would unfold as the story progressed. But more and more ideas came to me over the course of the next few months. There is another figure who comes into the playing field not long after the investigation into Dawnrise begins, and she herself has several followers who become entwined with the greater story arc and the actions of the rest of the cast. She's very influential to the story, so I'm going to save all the lore for when I introduce her, however far into the future that may be. But nevertheless, it was her creation that led to the story stretching far beyond Blackfeld and into the rest of the story's universe. Work on The Reverent Silence is going smoothly, though I'm still figuring out my schedule for drawing and properly assessing how long that's going to take on top of all the script writing, brainstorming, and all other outside work, including for my YouTube channel. I've recently revised my production timeline, so hopefully I can be a good spaghetti bowl and stick to that. And for the next few months, I hope to commit to working on the webcomic in earnest when I have the time to do so. It actually feels really exciting being finally able to work on the webcomic itself after writing and brainstorming about it for so long. It feels like I'm actually getting work done. I feel so accomplished. 
I have three seasons planned for the reverent silence, or three seasons worth of angst, banter, magic investigations, questionable counseling groups, and existential ruminations. But don't worry, I'll be giving my characters some breathing room too. I think what I'm going to do is work on the webcomic as much as I can in between my video work because I want to have some chapters already finished before launch day so I don't have 10 aneurysms at the same time down the road. I have an ETA for the Reverend Silence's launch date, but in the few months between now and then, I plan on introducing the characters over the course of several videos. They won't all be consecutive since I have other videos in the pipeline, and also since I want to give myself a buffer between one character intro video and the next. Otherwise, I'm just gonna burn myself out and cry in my tub. Yeah. And as it so happens, the first two that I'm going to introduce are Nadia and Safia. I'm very excited to talk about these two in particular since they have a lot of lore surrounding them, but I'm not sure how much I can talk about without dropping spoilers, so I'm gonna have to rein myself in. That's not to say I'm not interested in talking about the rest of the cast, I'm excited to talk about all of them because they each have the roles to play in the story and I can't wait to share the basics of their character arcs and how all of them came into being. In fact, I came up with two of the main characters when I was still in high school, so both of them have existed for about 10 years. So I really want to talk about those two as well. Man, time flies. My plans are to post regularly on both Webtoon and Tapas, with previews on my Tumblr and Instagram accounts, but any changes to the schedule will be made on a community post along with any news and updates regarding the webcomic. I can't wait to finally unleash the fruits of my labor into the world, and hopefully you're as excited about this as I am. But that is going to do it for this video. I'm so glad I finally have this off my chest because I need to ramble about this project and I need people to ramble about it with. If you couldn't tell, I am very excited. If you like this video and you want to see more from me, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can also follow me on all my social medias in the description in the event that you want to eat my artwork or something. I promise it's delicious. If you want to support me further, I also have a Kofi and an Etsy shop where I sell a bunch of handmade things like jewelry. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to be introducing the main cast and talking more about the Reverend Silence in the coming months, so if you're interested to hear more about this project in particular, stay tuned. And yeah. Thanks for watching.